and some of them have given comments which are very insightful, some of them have given a creative twist to the story which also is very wonderful. All these are ways in which you can experiment with your listening. I am very happy that you are doing it, but keep doing it. See the exercise which we did today. By listening to something twice, you are able to memorize it. Some of you have such good memories that you are reproducing the same language as what I am reading, but it is a small passage. So, you say ok, we, have, we can't do it for longer ones. Begin with a small one, you know begin with 4 lines and then you can go to 400 lines, your entire 1 hour lecture throughout the 15 week semester, it will remain in your mind. So, it is a wonderful memory development process also, but we are talking about communication today. So, the two things which we did today is, we practiced listening. All of you who had to speak, I can guarantee were listening 100 percent. I can't guarantee the same for the remaining 4 groups, because I have no way of testing. Those of you who spoke, spoke on the story as it was, so I have no complaints which means you were listening with full concentration, you were not listening half heartedly. That is the first quality of listening. The second quality of listening is to make some use of that listening and the use of you made of it is you narrated it. You listened, you grasped the idea, you narrated it. That is the second aspect. The third is you supplemented it you added something also to it. So, these are all the great things about listening. First exercise we did listening, but we combined listening with speaking because you also spoke. So, what are the things which you have to remember about speaking? I will tell you a few of them. The first is that when you are speaking to a group, please be aware whether you are heard or not. There is a mic which is a you know flexible mic, can't you adjust the mic? Have not you seen a mic before? Why is it that you are unable to listen to yourself? You are so excited about speaking that you are not listening, that is not correct. Whatever you say you have to listen. I saw 2 or 3 students adjusting the mic out of 54, which is very bad. You calculate the percentage, it is a very bad percentage. So, do not do that. Whenever you come to the mic, you say one word and see can it be heard? Can the others listen to what you are saying or are you speaking only to me? I can hear you without that mic, I am sitting next to you. So, the first thing is when we are speaking, we are speaking for others not for ourselves. So, is it audible to everybody? Is it clear? Somebody spoke very fast. I told you in the morning that when we are speaking, especially when you are speaking to a group, speak slowly. When you are speaking to a friend, you speak fast. You know today we had a workshop which was very nice, I did not like the workshop, I loved it and so on so on. One to one conversation, correct speed, especially Indian languages because we have vowel consonant, vowel consonant, vowel consonant pattern. English is not that kind of a language, it has consonant clusters, then one vowel, then one you know consonant cluster again. So, give it a little space, you will find that people who are speaking keep saying hmm uh, and so on. They do not like we speak Telugu or Hindi or you know any other language. That pace is not there. So, do not use the intonation of your mother tongue for intonation of English. English has a separate intonation, your mother tongue has a separate intonation. 
If you listen to Radio Mirchi, you will find they speak Telugu like English. That is not good also. You speak English like English, you speak Telugu like Telugu. You speak Hindi like Hindi, don't make mixture. Who can make mixture? Those people who know equally good Hindi, English, Telugu, they can make a mixture. We can't do it. In an informal platform like Radio Mirchi, you can do it. In a formal platform like your college function or your interview or your job presentation, you can't do that. So, formal English is separate, informal English is separate. While speaking, this is important. While speaking, we sometimes use informal, sometimes we use formal. Somebody comes to the mic and says, hey guys, how are you? That is informal English. We do not use it unless only your friends are there. If it is a farewell party, freshers party, you can say it. Okay, this is the impact of foreign English on us. Because British English is very formal, American English is very informal. Now we have khichdi of both. So we do not know which we are using. We have to be careful. When we are formal, we say, hello audience or hello friends or hello classmates. I think you might all be in the same class. I do not know or the same college. All these you can say. The moment you use hi guys, it becomes informal. I have done I think one uh, video on formal English, informal English. Somebody says, you know, I want to I wanna learn English. Wanna is used by I want to. You do not know English, you say wanna. Wanna is a very, very high level of English where you are speaking informal English, possibly English as your mother tongue. So, do not use wanna and gonna till your English is perfect. First, learn formal perfect English. GR8. We have forgotten spellings. If you write GR8 in your examination, you will not get marks. If you write GREAT in your WhatsApp message, your friends will laugh at you. So, you have to choose. Choose informal when informal is needed. Choose formal when it is formal is needed. If you are speaking to in Telugu, you do not go to your principal and says, say, say, Emra, em now. Not to your principal. To your friend, you do not say, Emandi, Yostara. Which means context. In our own language, also, we are using context. Therefore, when you are speaking, use that context, that register, that form, that vocabulary or structure which is suitable to that. To the principal, speak formal English. To your friend, speak informal English. If you are writing to a friend, use informal. If you are writing to the principal, do not say, hi, yaar, please give me one day's leave. He is not your yaar, he is your principal, is not it? Or your teacher. So, you have to be very careful in what you are doing. That is the next point about speaking. Speaking formally, speaking informally. You have to keep that in mind. I told you about pace, I told you about uh, various other points. Now, also, listening and speaking are related to each other. We have a word called rumor. Have you heard the word rumor? You know, you start with one word and by the time it reaches the 100th person, the story has changed completely. So, what did happen? You know, somebody started by saying, today there were clouds in the morning. By the time I heard the story after 100 people, I heard that there was a cyclone in Hyderabad. That is how the story came to me when the first person said there were some clouds in the morning. There were really clouds today, but there was no cyclone. So, what happened? The listening got completely corrupted. So, how close to the listening is our understanding? That is most important. Here I will give you the example of the word miracle. 
one story, you know, story number five had the word miracle. Now, with the coming of science in the late 19th century, we thought that there is something called scientific vocabulary and there is something called non-scientific which is religious vocabulary. So, there was a fight between science and religion. Science said we are correct, religion said no you are not correct. So, there was a fight. Charles Darwin came and said oh my god Bible is terrible and so on. So, we had long fight conflict. There was a time when it was decided one boy used this term metaphor, I was very happy he used the word metaphor. You know you all had wonderful ideas, I appreciate that ideas. So, a metaphor, a miracle here is a metaphor for everything that is happening to us. I am sure all of us like eating mangoes, you know a dried up seed you put in horrible looking mud, the plant comes out, the leaves are green in color, the stem is brown in color, you cannot eat the leaves, you cannot eat the, uh, the stem, branches you cannot eat. When the mango comes you do not have to inject sugar into it it gives you a wonderful fruit. What happened? It is nature's miracle, is not it? Nature gave you that miracle. The tea leaf comes, you look at it so horrible, you keep boiling the, it in water, you get nice tea which all of us like to drink. So, these are all the miracles of nature. You know you boil everything you do not get tea. You boil grass, you do not get that color. How is it that tea which does not have that brown color gives you that brown colored liquid? These are all rational scientific doctrines like a miracle. So, everything is miraculous. If without realizing we are able to breathe, have you counted how many times you breathed from 10 o'clock today? Nobody counted, no, we are breathing. Are we not breathing? If we were not breathing, we would not be alive now. So, this is miraculous. How does the heart do its work? The scientist found out and told us, but before the scientist found out how many times the heart beats from you know millions of years because animals have been there for a longer time. Do you think the heart never used to beat? It is not the scientist who found out the apple fell on Newton's head. So, he said okay gravitation is there. Was there no gravitation before Newton? It was there. So, there is a scientific principle in nature and that scientific principle is what we call as miracle. But when Sri Ramakrishna is telling this story, people never had much education in India. You know not almost nobody used to go for education their knowledge was from songs and plays which were mainly religious. So, he gives the example of miracle of walking on water like we have the story of uh, you know Hanuman jumping on the ocean and going to Sri Lanka. You and I cannot do that if we go to the end of our country and we say I want to be like Hanuman please Hanuman help me. Still we have to take flight or boat or something, not jump. Do you understand? So, we need to follow these ideas that the world, somebody one of the girls said that everything around us is miraculous which is very good. You have a lot of maturity in thought and you have good expression, this has to be used. If you keep your expressions, your intonation, your structures all these correctly. Okay. I had a uh, list, no, that sheet of paper if I can get back. I do not know who has that handwritten list. <coughs> so, we have to remember a few things because self improvement means we should I identify at what level we are and how much improvement we require. For instance, as I told you, 
when we speak the first thing people hear is our pronunciation and intonation if you are speaking english it should be intelligible to everybody who is following it since we learn our mother tongue before learning english many of us have the effect of our mother tongue on english this is not good because when you go for jobs they usually expect you to have english which doesn't have this mother tongue influence so we have to concentrate on pronunciation and intonation this we can do if we hear more and more not for understanding but for getting the pronunciation you know the mind records it and when we pronounce we try to pronounce correctly you can always pronounce if you have difficult words by using dictionary.com you open dictionary.com pronunciation is there one symbol is there you press the symbol the word is pronounced keep pressing it 10 times you will get pronunciation you keep pronouncing it 10 times 20 times your pronunciation improves okay earlier we didn't have all this but today we have if you buy an oxford dictionary i am told they give you a cd it has all the pronunciations so all this technology is helping us you know we say technology is hindering us and global warming and all that but there are many things which technology helps us to do this is one for instance we had a story of the chameleon you remember the word is c r e a t u r e many of you use the word the pronunciation is creature cre ch do you get not creature suppose we say c r e a t same c r e a t then t e create creation there we are saying e a but for creature we are not saying creature don't go by spellings very often english is not a very phonetic language so we cannot go always by spellings so let me hear you pronounce creature 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 means animal any living being is called as a creature okay please pronounce again creature. they didn't give you any lunch or you didn't bring any lunch from morning till evening voice has become 10% creature creature slightly better you know when i come to you i become deaf so you have to speak loudly the madam is deaf she can't hear anything if you speak softly i can't hear that is why i told you use the mic that is what all teachers become when they come to the class outside the class we have very sharp ears if you are whispering also we can hear inside the class we want you to speak aloud loud if you speak you get self confidence remember that if you don't have confidence you will speak softly if you have confidence you will speak loud your body language your non verbal communication everything shows your confidence did you see all that tomorrow you please note all that you know a wonderful exercise will be if all of you note down about each speaker each reader and then at the end of the day you hand over those slips so each student will get 53 slips of paper saying how did he or she perform that's a wonderful peer evaluation it's called peer evaluation is wonderful for a workshop but sometimes what happens if somebody says bad things about me they become my enemies that should not happen people who tell us our mistakes are our best friends always remember people who tell us you are very good are not so good friends as people you tell who tell us that you have to improve you can improve okay so let us do somebody pronounced determine it is not determine it is determine m i n e is mine but remember that unaccented word fully it's not pronounced so the pronunciation is determine d e t e r m i n e please pronounce determine, determine. determine. not determine mine if you say coal mine gold mine then pronounce as mine 
like that you know we say l a n d land but we don't say england this language which we are learning are their language you know 200 years they ruled us they pronounce as england land not land but land did you understand L a becomes a sound because the stress is elsewhere and this is elsewhere to learn this there are hundreds of online pronunciation videos you don't have to look at my videos look at videos where pronunciation is taught and learn them yourself otherwise look at a difficult word and learn the pronunciation you can learn all these things somebody use the word intelligence we don't have the intelligence the word is intelligence it's a noun form the adjective form is intelligent did you understand so we don't have to say similarly you know attendancy brilliancy we have many uses it is not your mistake it's a common mistake whatever i'm telling you are usual mistakes which are made so these are some of the things which i noted i'm telling you now in english we have a rule that two nouns cannot come side by side unless they are possessive that is apostrophe so somebody said you know we had a story about partial knowledge you remember you know partial knowledge not full knowledge so somebody says partial knowledge people so what we have to say people with partial knowledge knowledge is noun people is noun if two nouns are together they are very important they start fighting you know it is like inviting two speakers here so i am also speaking here somebody is also here that person will say you stop you stop i'll speak i said no no you stop i will speak full full fight so 10 to 4 fighting only no class no workshop so we cannot have nouns are such important words that they carry out their functions alone so if you say partial knowledge people knowledge and people will have real fighting family members family is a noun members is a noun so we say members of the family but we have something called indian english so many things are accepted in indian english but many of you might go abroad there if you say such thing if you say i'll eat my tiffin nobody will know what tiffin is tiffin is typically you say our exam was preponed so what does prepone mean the no word called prepone the word is advance not prepone but we are using it everybody understands and we use more and more and more can able to can means able to able to means able to so you are putting too many things together we don't need if you want to travel in an aircraft you can't sit in two aircrafts you have to sit only in one you want to travel in a train you can't sit in one coach and run another train another coach you can't cut your body into half half so why can able to we don't require now many of you made god as the god first story the god is very relevant in india because we have endless gods some 33 million gods it seems i don't know my grandmother used to tell us many million gods but wonderful because that is a pluralistic culture today what they are fighting for they are saying you know we have real problem you don't accept others the culture of india is pluralistic anybody comes you accept if you worship some god no problem if you worship some god no problem then you say the god the god means specific god but here we are referring to a concept which is a concept of a cosmic intelligence we might not even call it a god some kind of a mechanism which is there in the world in the universe which is running this whole show it might be only energy you know it might not be somebody who has so many arms and legs and somebody who's sitting far away it might only be a concept it might not be a physical individual but we are talking about something which is only single then we don't use any article we say they prayed to god not they prayed to the god the moment you say they prayed to the god question will come which god which god shiva or 
विष्णु और देवी और लक्ष्मी और हनुमान और गणेश एन नंबर आई कैन गो ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन मेकिंग एवरी यू नो कॉर्नर ऑफ द रोड देर इज वन टेम्पल अ डिफरेंट गॉड सो वी कैन हैव नो प्रॉब्लम दिस इज वन लेवल there's a beautiful story by swami vivekananda where people say oh this religion is so horrible they keep worshiping stones and they keep worshiping everything what is horrible thing so vivekananda knew this is not correct but he didn't want to tell anything he wanted to use a metaphor so this was a king's court room king was sitting all ministers were sitting they were saying oh swami ji your religion is horrible no use how can we worship these things how can you have idol worship because foreigners were telling us this is all wrong then vivekananda knew there was something else in it so he wanted to show then he said okay i don't talk to you i just want to do a game now what is this game he said bring a portrait of your maharaja so okay fine they brought nice big portrait of maharaja very proudly they are carrying it on their head they said now put it on the floor <gasps> how can we put it on the floor maharaja is sitting here he will get very angry how can we put it on the floor floor is insult he says no we are playing a game put it maharaja can we put yes put now he says go and spit on it go and kick it go and do everything you want to do to that which is negative He says no 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 we can't do it we can't do it he says why that is only a picture your maharaja is here why are you scared of the picture the picture reminds us of maharaja he says do you understand why we worship in temples the temple reminds us of god which is completely non dual we have advaita we have dvaita we have vishishta advaita the highest not only philosophy the highest psychology also is there in our country the highest science is there in our country but we lost it in 1000 years of captivity we have lost our treasures now outsiders are finding it you will find more books on ramakrishna which are coming from abroad nobody is come talking about it here people are doing phd thesis on this we are saying oh who is ram krishna some old man somewhere we don't care we don't know people are saying he's the most brilliant man legal profession they are using examples from him science they are using examples from him great scientists like einstein said you know that science and religion are related to each other science and spirituality without it one is blind without it the other is lame it can't walk it can't see so they are interrelated that idea all these ideas come to us from here so that's why i wanted to tell you god miracle these are all dangerous words now at least in our country it's not so bad when i travel all over the world i find recently i was telling you couple of weeks back i was in a country where i asked what is your religion is it still this religion he says no 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 we are all atheists we don't believe in religion wonderful you can be an atheist ramakrishna says be an honest atheist don't get worried but an atheist is a person who has good values also he helps people he feels for people he doesn't believe in god god is far away who is god so he taught he said that who is your god the poor person is your god daridra narayan the uneducated person is your god you know the person who needs your help to be educated the person who is ill in the hospital rogi narayan that is your god not god sitting far away saying god please give me please give me i'll give you one coconut i'll give you 5 rupees no that is not the kind of god the god is your ability to help each other so these ideas all come from this concept this person who talks about how to live efficiently how to make your life best most successful by you know believing in god means beyond our help where 
our self effort is not possible there we say okay we believe in god but without making self effort we don't do that then many of you gave the title of the story as chameleon car is coming okay now uh, the title of the story as far as i remember i have to check up the recording it was the chameleon did i stress the the word the itself has two pronunciations which many of you made a mistake when the following word is consonant sound like i say the chameleon but i don't say i say the university although i write with u which is a vowel sound i pronounce as year year is a consonant sound so i say the university but i pronounce say egg then this pronunciation is a a is a vowel sound so i say the egg i don't say the egg similarly when you are pronouncing you know when you see this video this video will be uploaded possibly you have a great advantage you can see yourself 100 times and correct your own mistakes you know that is the greatness of self learning go on seeing yourself whenever we give training for interview skills etc record this person's interview each student's interview then give the cd to that person go home and improve yourself so you look at your body language you know communication has a non verbal aspect how will you walk into the room how will you sit on the chair how will you look how how should your facial expression be if you are always smiling then it's the interviewer gets a doubt any problem the interviewer tells you a joke you look seriously because you're so scared you look seriously at the interviewer that means your non verbal skills are very bad so when you are learning lsrw you need to learn the non verbal skill also do you get my point how to walk how to stand tomorrow you have notice all this about each other how to speak what is your pronunciation what is your grammar what is your intonation all this you speak then we have another one fell fell is not used with is fell somebody used falling you know is falling or fell or collapsed that was the word used many people used collapse that also is fine but some when you are narrating a single story keep to the same tense somebody began by saying that put and saw the animal so either we can say the man enters the wood and sees the animal or the man entered the woods and saw the animal so throughout the story we keep the same tense we don't make tense variations in a single narrative suppose we are talking about somebody speaking you said the man says then you can use present that by removing grammar we are doing a great disservice but today research says that if you teach grammar they are learning only grammar they are not learning communication so please don't forget grammar but please don't limit yourself to grammar learn grammar for betterment otherwise learn naturally i told you this morning it's called acquisition learn english from english don't learn english by basing on some other words on some other language or some books only books are very helpful up to a point ramakrishna tells a story you know i'm not reading that story or i'm not making you read the story i'm just telling you now he says one person gets a letter from the village the letter says from the city get some rice get some clothes get this get that how long is the letter valid as long as you get those things once you get the thing do you preserve the do you keep the letter like this no you just throw the letter so that is how the books are the books are for giving us knowledge if we hold on to the book like this we say oh 
today I am sleeping with the grammar book under my pillow, tomorrow I will have excellent English, that's not possible. Tomorrow I am take, today I am taking on one pill, grammar pill, tomorrow my grammar is perfect, my communication is perfect, it doesn't happen. The only thing is hard work, I am telling again and again that even if your English is excellent, I have been teaching English for 40 years, I have been learning English for another, you know, before that 20 years. So you can imagine how much English I should be knowing, but still I feel I don't know English, still I feel I want to improve my English, I want to make my English better and better. So there is no limit to learning, we can go on learning, go on bettering ourselves, we have to do that. There were some difficult words also, now the stories are all with you. The story of the chameleon I think, I saw some uh, words. <coughs> Let me see. No, not chameleon, some other story. Number 5, what did I read? Number 5, 123. Page 123, you just check. Yeah, the word was given. Rebuke. Rebuke means to scold. You can see page 124, third line, middle. If you have the page with you, you can check. Rebuke. If you already know the meaning, that's wonderful. If you don't know the meaning, you can always ask. Then there is page uh, 54, the root of all troubles. The word is there swoop, swoop means to fly straight like that, you know, to snatch away something by flying straight like that, that verb is swoop, very rarely we use that word. Snatch, snatch is to take by force, that is also there. Chased, chased is to follow behind, cawing, the noise which crows make, you know, cow, 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 we say, that is the noise, cawing, okay, then uh, anything else, no. You read, today you read these pages, underline whichever word is difficult, you can ask me again tomorrow, no harm. You can look at the dictionary yourself if you feel like, no problem about that also. 46, 47, okay, no, no problems are there. Then 123, 125. Okay, this 187 we have done. Here is one, contented. This is page one, the chameleon first page. Chameleon first page, somewhere in the middle of the paragraph at the end of the line. Presently others arrived and contended. Contend is to declare. Contend is to speak strongly, contend is to say in an argumentative way that what am I, what am I am saying is the truth, that is the word contend. Then uh, dispute, dispute is quarrel, then contradict, contradict is to say exactly the opposite, something which is different, something which is opposite. Okay? I can't make out because I gave you some examples only. 
Okay, has it come? So, you can imagine how we can learn vocabulary. Now, look at the first story which we did, which is on page 132. While doing the story itself, I told you that so much punctuation is there in the story. Three friends and the tiger, 132. You see how the punctuation is. Many times I find this mistake. Brothers, open inverted commas, comma, close inverted commas. All punctuation mark comes within inverted commas. You must always remember that. Question mark, comma, uh, full stop, exclamation mark, all this will always come before the end of the punctuation mark, because these punctuation marks relate to the sentence or the word and inverted commas relates to the whole unit. So, the whole unit is most important for us. Look at the word also, you know, question mark is there. Why should you say that question mark close inverted commas? Inverted commas and apostrophe are very often made mistakes. Inverted commas is a double mark like this and like this. Apostrophe is a single comma at the top of the word. Inverted commas are used for saying the exact words of a speaker. Apostrophe has two uses. One use of apostrophe is that something is missing. Suppose you write today's date. 16, 11, 19. In front of 19, you put apostrophe. That means 2019. So, 20 is missing. We say do not, can't, should not, would not. That means something is missing. We are putting that comma. That comma on the top of the line is called apostrophe. That is one use. Apostrophe is used for to show something is missing. That something is understood from the context. The other use of apostrophe is possessive, student's notebook. So, student apostrophe s notebook. Suppose we say student's notebooks, students is plural, notebooks is plural, apostrophe comes after s. So, whichever the word is that if it s ending word apostrophe comes later, otherwise it comes apostrophe comes and then we put s. This is called possessive. We say my uncle's house, a whole video I think I have done for impact on these apostrophes. So, if you are watching, I felt happy that you are watching. At least somebody I know is watching. Most of the millions who are watching, I do not know them at all. They are all strangers to me, but they very sweetly write saying, Madam, we are your students. I feel happy to have many million students but I am only an individual, please understand. I can't help everybody who wants help. I want you to help yourself. Do not depend on others to learn a language. Nobody can learn a language for you. Only you can learn it yourself. So, today's exercise you go home and do. Do as often as you can. Do with your lessons because that will make you a better student. Listening, speaking, listening, speaking. You revise orally whatever you learned today in your college, if it is a working day today. You have 4 or 5 hours per day, I do not know how many hours you have. So, go home and try to revise or when you are waiting for your bus, try to revise. In this way, you benefit, you get better. Did you understand? So, this exercise we have done. 